hello everyone long time no see don't give me a hard time <laughs> i'm kind of a jack of all trades i get involved in things and get busy doing something else and i have multiple projects going on at the same time and eventually i drop a ball or two but the good news is i pick them up sooner or later and start over and so i just looking at my video library realizing that it's probably been a couple of years since i actually posted a video and yet people are still subscribing to my channel and liking my content and i still hear from people who see a video and you know make a comment or tell me how useful it is and all that stuff so i feel responsible to pick up where i left off and this first vlog is it still called a vlog i don't know i'm not keeping up with the millennial terminology apparently so this particular issue <laughs> is uh, something i recently wrote about in my blog i do have a weekly blog on substack um I'll put the link on the bottom. It's vpetrova.com. Um, it's called Life Intelligence because, yeah, we all need more of it. Just look around. That's all the proof you need. <laughs> so my Life Intelligence blog is actually going on regularly, weekly, uh, delivered in people's emails, those who subscribe it's free so i propagate intelligence life intelligence for free trying to make the world a better place i guess um and so what i'll be doing is i don't want to make myself committed to something i can't keep up with but if i can do this once a month <laughs> pick one of my blog entries and do a video on it um, so different people like to consume the information differently. Some people like to read, some people like to see something and listen to it. So I will try to expand on my writing with a video and I'll connect the two. I'll connect the video to the actual written piece. And sometimes I'll just keep doing things that are only on video as inspiration strikes if it does i'm not sure <laughs> all right so enough with the introduction um this one this piece is on how to make friends if you're a busy adult because okay partly because of the pandemic and partly because we all have our faces in screens phone screens or computer screens we seem to be running low on friends i don't want to quote this the wrong way but i believe like in the 80s the average person had like five really good friends <laughs> and now like the average person has maybe one good friend and so there is a sense of isolation regardless of the connectivity we have this way of connecting to everything and yet nothing um, it's one thing to know of someone and watch them somewhere on social media and it's another thing to go have a beer with the person <laughs> so we are suffering because of the fact that we're losing friends we don't have them i lost a few friends in the last few years some of them moving away to other areas searching for opportunities work opportunities school opportunities or whatever um and i feel the difference i have not necessarily replaced them um luckily i still have enough friends to feel happy in my environment but 
that's not the way it is for everybody especially if you work long hours have perhaps one or two kids to take care of whether you're a single parent or not your world shrinks quite a bit your responsibilities occupy most of your time especially if you live in the usa of a we kind of pride ourselves on overdoing work and being busy well the the cost of that is that you don't have enough time to socialize and if you rely on your social media for socializing you are pretty screwed i'm sorry so how do you make friends in this environment that was a question one of my readers asked and so i wrote a post about it which honestly i write very concisely and intelligently not the way i speak <laughs> so if you want to see the short answer just go right to the blog but you know I'll, there's more that's coming out here as i speak so both of these would be valuable so the first thing I would suggest is um, think about when you were younger. We associate our younger selves with more friends. When we were in school, we had no trouble making friends or even if we had a little bit of trouble, we just in general had more friends. And now it doesn't seem to be that easy to make them. So think about... Um, um, why is that that you had more friends when you were younger and you'll find out that you made time for friends you went out there looking for friends you know you go out on the street looking for somebody to play with or you join a team at school or a club at school and um, through those activities you end up with built-in friends you know your teammates your choir friends your music friends whatever you end up with friends and on top of that you are sharing experiences with them and so all that requires time and you're willing to put in the time to find them to to wander around with them to talk to them to practice with them whatever you were willing to put in the time that's um something that not many of us now would like to do but if you want to have friends you have to put in the time um you have to put in the time to find them where do you find them if you're an adult maybe you find them through your work maybe you find them through social clubs you can join clubs based on your interests you like quilting ping pong i don't know social dancing you can find people similar to you and um, with similar interest if you join clubs and groups that revolve around those interests you can find them on meetup.com um, you can find them through business acquaintances you can find them through friends i i i said um i always tell people never say no to a party and um you find them at parties <laughs> and it's kind of easy because your friends will introduce you to their friends when you go to a party which is different than go sit in the bar and and hope for somebody to make eye contact with you and total stranger out of the clear blue now you're trying to have a conversation and make friends with a potential mass murderer I don't know <laughs> it happens right especially if you're a woman it's like yeah who's that guy what's he gonna slip in my drink so never say no to a party uh, when your friends invite you or your co-workers invite you it, it's an organic way to meet people and if you're the shy personality and find it difficult to step out of your comfort zone and make a conversation even at a party sign up for some responsibilities you know carry the drinks around it makes you talk to people <laughs> or um but by assuming something making yourself useful to the host or to the event or whatever it kind of forces you to interact and interface with others so 
that's one thing. Um, there are actually apps for making friends. I've never tried any of them, uh, but you can look them up. I actually have a link on my blog to like the 10 best apps to make friends. This sounds like such a millennial thing to do, but maybe you're a millennial watching this video and this is like, yeah, I can do that. I don't know how to operate an app. So that's another way. Um, just remember, um, yeah, you have to make time and you have to make space for friends. Um, if you don't let anyone in, there won't be anyone there when you need them. So friends are kind of important for your mental well-being, for a balanced, satisfying life. You can't, you can't do it alone. Um, once you make some friends or in the process of making friends, you just meet some people and you have some acquaintances, um, go out of your way to be helpful and to be valuable. Um, always think what you can contribute. Um, maybe it's just your sense of humor. Maybe you got the pad the party would appreciate. <laughs> maybe you got the social connections to put something together. Uh, maybe you can bring the pizza or the drinks. Whatever it is, maybe you provide the ride. Mm. When you think in terms of how you can be valuable and useful, that's how people see you instead of the opposite where you're approaching this acquaintanceship, friendship making as what's in it for me. That goes stale really fast and people recognize it and they're not interested. But they will be interested if they find you interesting, valuable and helpful. Naturally, they'll bind or you'll bind with them. Um, initiate things. So instead of waiting for the party to happen, you, you start it. You send out the invitations or you got tickets for a concert, extra tickets for something. Invite some people or it's Friday night. How about drinks after work? By initiating something, you have something, right? You can't just rely on others. But by reaching out, you create yourself some opportunities. Um, make sure that when you're around people, acquaintances, co-workers, whatever, make sure you're listening, you're paying attention. Because that's how you make a connection. Participate in the conversations. Don't look at your phone and keep texting while somebody's talking to you. Like automatically you're saying, sorry, my phone is more interesting than you are. And then you complain that you don't have any friends. Well, who the hell's going to want to be friends with you and compete with your phone? Just now. Um, reciprocate. If somebody does you a favor or invites you somewhere or does something nice, reciprocate. You know, if if they're talking, you you know, if you're talking their ear off because of your problems, next time they want someone to listen, you be that person. Um, somebody gives you a ride, maybe you help them out in some other way. Always reciprocate. So it's, you're never a one-way street. Be reliable. I mean, why do I even have to say this? This is so much degradation there is in our society where people are often so selfish that they don't feel bad if they're flaky. But if you're flaky, you're going to get one invitation. You're going to be asked for something once or twice, and then people will lose your number. They're like, yeah, I don't want to deal with this person. You can't. You make plans for something, they don't show up. They promise to bring something, they don't. You're flaky. You're going to lose your chances. And guess what? The word spreads around. 
So if it's like among your coworkers, you're trying to make some friends, you're flaking out here and there, pretty soon everybody knows you're flake, you're out, you're not on the list of invitees. <laughs> Nobody cares about talking behind your back about how flaky you are. Um, also forgive and forget. People are not perfect. You are not perfect. You put your foot in your mouth here and there, apologize, make comments, but also consider when others do it, wax on wax off forgive and forget you hold grudges you're not gonna have friends uh, if you hold people to higher standards than you hold yourself you're not gonna have friends you can't expect people to be perfect when you are way less than perfect uh, you know yourself you know how much you fib or exaggerate or flake um and so you know cut people some slack um also be open to surprises um maybe you don't have a very good interaction or first impression um about someone be open to them changing if you say that you are changing for the better i hope <laughs> then why not others so don't look at the person today as if it's still two months ago or three months ago or five years ago um they might have changed so give them a chance um what not to do don't be too picky especially in the beginning uh, try to meet as many people as you can um because maybe the person you meet is not going to click with you and be your friend or you'd be interested in being friends with them but maybe they'll lead you to someone else that can open some other doors for you like a chain reaction of some sort um and you might end up finding people that are good for certain things like some people you might like to go drinking with and other people you might want to go play tennis with and they don't have to be one and the same so uh, by casting your net kind of wide you open up opportunities and increase your potential possibility of meeting your best friends let's say <laughs> um, don't be a pushover but at the same time don't be demanding either and self-righteous in other words no one likes an asshole so just look at your behavior and imagine somebody's looking at you from the side and judge yourself from a third person perspective it's like am i being an asshole am i lecturing people on how things should be instead of listening and making a connection um yeah that behavior is usually like immediately disqualifies you from the next invitation <laughs> whatever that is <laughs> and also try not to interrupt others when they talk so you're having a nice conversation with a bunch of folks around the water cooler or around fourth of july barbecue and then you interrupt everybody that has something to say and you butt in and you want to take over the conversation and no you're not going to be you are not going to make a good impression and no you're not going to be able to make any friends there you're just going to annoy a bunch of people um and just remember that um sometimes probably often actually people talk they tell stories not because they want to impart information on to you maybe because they just want to hear themselves talk they like the interaction it's a way to make a connection it's a, a way to reveal something about themselves to you so you listen to them for them right um and along the same lines don't one up them 
So somebody tells a story and you immediately go, yeah, but wait till I tell you what happened to me. Like, who the hell cares? The person is trying to say something and you are like squishing them down. So be aware of that. You will get your chance to tell your story. Just give that person the five minutes of the, you know, being center of attention for five, ten minutes and laugh at their jokes, you know, just, just be a human being. Don't constantly try to one up somebody or show off how smart you are or all the places you've been or whatever, you know, like, no, that's a do not do if you want to make friends. Um, also do not make people feel stupid. So like somebody says something and you come across critical and make fun of them or so they feel stupid and inadequate. No, they're not going to be your friend. <laughs> they will absolutely not be your friend. <laughs> if they ask you for your advice, you can tiptoe around that and try to be diplomatic about what you would do or maybe someone you know what they did. But if they don't ask you for your advice, shove it you know you may be right you may be wrong but you'd always be an asshole if you show it in people's faces so be mindful of what's going on and um if no one's asking you advice keep it to yourself <laughs> and the on the flip side is don't burden people with your problems it's like even your best of friends will get tired of listening to you complaining about things you always complain about and apparently have no interest in changing they'll listen to you the first time the second time the third time then they'll tune you out and they'll cut the conversation short and they'll find something else to do because they don't want to hear about the same thing that you refuse to change or take action to change so you can't, I, I forgot where that was, but somewhere I read, I think that uh, you can always, you can rely on your friends to be sympathetic about an issue for about a couple of weeks. And then they teach you, they're like, yeah, no, <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> the sympathy declines as time goes on. <laughs> um don't feign interest. So you can't fake interest because we have evolved socially, evolutionary, to recognize the fakes because we, for survival purposes, have developed, in essence, like instincts to identify people that can be on our team, in our tribe, so that we together can survive. So we're really good. People are really good at spotting fakes. So you can say the right things. If you're not sincere about it, people will be like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you really care, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk to the hand. Like, they know. So they will not, they, they'll probably avoid you. Um, keep track of how many favors you ask. If you're always the person asking for favors, yeah, that's a burden. Burden on your friends. You wouldn't like it if they're doing it to you. They don't like it if you do it to them. So, all right, hopefully you have enough pointers here. You can visit the blog post and read more about it in a more coherent way. <laughs> Short and sweet. But basically, the bottom line is, if you want to make friends, you have to make them. They're not going to make themselves. You need experiences with people, experience that, experiences that will bring you together. To make um, experiences, essentially, you have to make time for experiences. So you can't work all the time stay home all the time, play video games all the time, whatever you're doing with your free time by yourself all the time and expect to have friends. They're not going to magically appear. Look for them, make time for them, go do stuff with them, 
don't be too picky in the beginning they'll sort themselves out all these new people you meet they'll sort themselves out and eventually you'll end up with you know one or two or three folks that are near and dear to your heart and you can rely on them and they can rely on you and you make yourself a little click so to speak um if you have any questions comment below i read the comments actually and i like to know what people think and what interests them so also use the comments as like a an opportunity to submit a question i guess <laughs> and thank you for watching everything i spoke about i'll put a link down below if you like this video give me the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Bye!